Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are talking about where bass go after they spawn. In the post-spawn leading into summer, these fish get on the move again. Bass do not stay still. They start making their moves to their summer haunts. Staying ahead of those movements and ahead of those bass is the only way that you're going to consistently catch them. So today we're covering where they go and most importantly, how to catch them. Understanding where these fish go after the spawn requires an understanding of what type of fishery you are on. So today's video, we're going to break down by lake type. We're going to break it down into four different styles of fishery. The highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, natural lakes, which will include ponds, and then rivers or creeks. Also, delta systems could be lumped in there. Anything that's got river current flow going through it. So those are our four different categories. The reason we're going to do that is that though a bass's motivation is the same, based on the type of fishery that it is in, its movements will vary a little bit. So let's start with the Highland Reservoir because I think that has probably the most interesting dynamic. Highland Reservoirs, which if you're not familiar, are going to be lakes like, oh, what are some examples? Lake Cumberland, maybe uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rock, those lakes that have those long fingers, lots of little shoots going off, and typically a small, steep dam. If you're not totally familiar, you can look up a map of your lake, try to get a feel for it, and decide what kind of place you are on. So a highland reservoir, a lot of different creek arms, a lot of little fingers, fairly deep water overall, and typically fairly clear water, though not all of them are clear. In a highland reservoir, bass are going to do one major thing after the spawn. The vast majority of bass are going to begin backing back out to outside structures, meaning they're actually going to behave pretty similarly to what they were doing in the winter time. They're just going to be more active. So they're going to come out of the coves, out of the spawning bays. They're going to work their way back along the secondary points going back out to outside points, outside humps and rock piles, ledges. That's where those fish are headed. Again, the big difference between summer and winter is that when they get there, they're still going to be quite aggressive and they're going to need to feed much more than they did when the water was colder. But the actual locations are very similar. It's all rock driven. If your reservoir has got a lot of rock, you're looking for those outside corners that have big boulders on them. Those big offshore rock piles. Those fish love to congregate on that stuff, especially if the water is clean. Now, how do you catch these fish in a highland reservoir? That's where it gets interesting. Now, of course, you can go to those outside structures. You can fish those fish exactly how you've always done it. You can throw small swim baits, underspin, spinner baits, lipless. There's so many different things you can do. Swim baits. But here's something for you. If you're not familiar with something called a color line, you've been missing it. See, a lot of people after the spawn, they go out early in the morning. That's when they fish. They go out early, they fish until that sun starts to come up, the pleasure boaters come out, and they head for home. If you're really a diehard, maybe you come back in the evening or the night and you go for another fishing session. But a lot of people blow it on one of the best bites during that post spawn going into early summer and that is fishing the color line when the sun is up high so what is that on a clear reservoir in a muddy reservoir you can't see the color line on a clear reservoir if you pull up onto a point the outside water the offshore water it's typically a dark blue or a green but it's dark the closer you get to the bank that water will begin to change color. It'll get a lighter color because you're starting to see the bottom through the water. And then when you get right up to shore, it's a really light color. The color line is that line out there off the bank where it goes from that lighter color to that dark offshore water color. You can see a distinct line. If you're up high above the lake, you can see this line out off the bank and we call that a color line. 
What that is, again, is the spot where you're no longer seeing the bottom. So that's not impacting the color. Well, for the fish on the other end of that, if they sit just outside of the color line and they're down near the bottom, they're now covered in shadow. They are just outside of where that light penetration is really hitting the bottom. So when they sit just outside of the color line, they can look up into the shallows and see everything, but the things in the shallows struggle to see them. And that's an excellent place for a bass in clear water to live its life and to hunt. So what we do going into summer is we fish that color line in clear water. Now the line will move. If your lake has five or six feet of visibility, your line is really, really close to shore. If your lake has 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 feet of visibility, that line will move farther and farther out over deeper and deeper water. So you want to fish right on the line and we typically fish parallel. It's a great place to throw a Kitek swim bait, count it down, run it through there. It's a great place to throw a crankbait. It's a great place to throw a topwater. If you've got smallmouth or spotted bass or they're really aggressive, they'll suspend out there on that color line. It doesn't matter that it might be 60 feet deep. They'll sit part way down out in that dark water and ambush up to your top water fished parallel on the color line. So again, if you've never fished a color line, you've been missing out on one of the greatest things you can do in the summertime. Next up would be lowland reservoirs. Lowland reservoirs, your fish are going to split into two distinct groups. Now there were a small percentage of fish in a highland reservoir that will, that will handle the second group as well, which is staying shallow and going into grass, but there's far less of them in a highland reservoir than in a lowland. So a lowland reservoir is still a reservoir, obviously. It's got a dam on it, but the fingers don't tend to have as many little offshoots. They don't go as far. They tend to be larger, more open bays with a lot more offshore structure, be that old creek channels that come in and wind and bend. So you get a lot of humps around those. Offshore islands, all sorts of different things. Long points that come out and they go and they have highs and lows. So you get island top after island top after island top. That is typically on a lowland reservoir. Another thing about a lot of lowland reservoirs, especially those in the south, is that they tend to have a lot of current. They pull a lot of water through them in the summertime. Now, not all lowland reservoirs have that, but most do. Those fish are typically doing the same thing. They're headed to the outside haunts. The first big group of fish are backing back out. So they're going to jump back out the secondary points, headed to outside structure, but they tend to do a lot more of it offshore. If there are offshore humps that they can follow or ridges that they can follow going back out, they will do that rather than being up on the bank. And their ultimate goal is to get back out on the ledges around that summertime current, out there where that water is flowing and the food will come to them. But the second group of fish, they stay shallow. And I can't tell you why one big bass decides it should be going out to the deep water, out to the ledges, out to the current, and another big bass decides it's going to go up into the grass mats and spend its summer there. I have no idea, but we know that they do both. So these fish are going to split. The ones that go shallow, they are headed again into the grass. Lowland reservoirs tend to get giant grass flats on them. Huge areas of matted vegetation, you know, Gunnersville, Chickamauga, those are famous lowland reservoirs. You get those giant grass flats that are famous for frogging and all sorts of other things. So half of your fish will stay up there, half of them will go to the outside stuff. The ones that stay shallow, where are you going to target them? Typically, you would target them around the structure that's a little different. In this case, it'll be the smaller grass clumps that stand out from the crowd. So if there are hundreds of yards in a giant grass flat, and then there's one patch that's out just a little further, that's your spot. Or one patch where it's all subsurface, but it's right there, there's just a little water over the top of the grass, but one patch reaches up and lays over and it's different. Your best fish will be right there. 
So on the on the shallow stuff, those fish stay in that grass, but they get on the stuff that's different. They get on the outer edges. The fish that go offshore, that go to the ledges, they want that current. That is where those fish are going to be. Now, let's talk river, and then we'll finish it up with natural lake. Rivers and creeks. Anywhere that you've got that flowing water, it's a different animal. What the bass have done to spawn is they've tried to get out of the current. They pulled into eddies, they pulled into any backwater, any oxbow, any little finger creek that's coming in where they could get out of the main current to spawn. But now that that's coming to an end, they're coming back to the current. They're going to sit right in it because that's how they get that easy meal. Food is coming down the current, much like a lowland reservoir, but on a much smaller scale. So these fish, they're going to tend to be aggressive. Creek fish in the summer are incredible. Most people target them in the deeper pools because they'll gather in the deep pools. There'll be a school of them. If you can get them fired up, you can catch a lot of fish. But something we like to do is to fish farther up in the fast water. I've found that some of my best fish in creeks and rivers, in a river you've got a natural flow. You've got riffles, the shallow water where you get that fast moving rapid water, and then you get a pool, and then a ripple or a rapid, and then another pool. Instead of fishing the pool, I like to fish right up at the base of the rapids, right at the end of the riffle on the first piece of overhead cover. If there's a branch, if there's a log, if there's something stuck there in the water, that first piece of cover right below that fastest water, you won't have as many fish, but oftentimes some of the really big ones will get up and sit right there and they take first pickings of whatever is coming down that faster water. So just something for you to think about this spring. Again, your fish will be in that current. They're going to be sitting behind something. They won't sit right in the fast water like a trout, but they're going to be really close. They'll be tucked behind a branch, tucked behind a log, behind a rock, near that faster water where they can just jump out and feed and ambush. Now, last but not least, natural lakes. And pond guys, you're lumped into this because your bodies of water are very similar. Even if it has a dam on it, most of it will apply. A natural lake is going to have really calm water. Water that doesn't have a lot of fluctuation to it throughout the year. You know, you'll have a natural drawdown during the summer, but it's not like somebody's draining water out of a natural lake. So it just slowly goes down. Very little water change. As a result, color line is a factor for you as well in a natural lake, but not nearly to the same extent as a clear water reservoir. And the reason why is that because with stable water conditions, grass will almost always grow out right to the color line. Right where the light penetration ends is the last place that the grass can grow. So given time, it will grow right to the color line. So you don't even have to go look for your color line. It literally is the outside grass line. Now, what do you do with that information? Treat it like a lowland reservoir. Those shallow water fish that go up in that grass, they wanna be on those things that are different. It's the same here. The best fish in a natural lake will tend to come to the outside of the grass lines, not the inside. There are fish up there, but they tend not to be the really big ones. The big ones come to the outside of the grass line and they set up on the anomalies, the things that are different. So the small grass clumps that come out the farthest, a little point in the grass clump that sticks out, a grass clump that's laid over on the surface instead of just emerging, those things that are different. That's where you want to spend your time going through the summer. Pond guys, same thing. Outer edges of the grass, right where it meets that deeper water, that's where the biggest fish will tend to be. They can use the deep water, they have that stability, but they can also get right up on that edge and hunt without having to travel. So it's really convenient for those fish. Now, with that said, how do we catch them? That's the most important thing here. So I've got a handful of baits for you. Let me pick all these up here. And we'll walk our way through them. I've got pockets full of hooks. We'll see if we can do this without me getting killed. 
Let's start on top. That's the most important thing. The Frog is my number one top water. Of all the top waters, we've done a bunch of top water videos lately explaining what each different style of bait is for. But if I could only have one, those shallow water fish, the ones that get up tight, the ones that are in the grass, a frog is just a convenient way to get in, to get out, to catch those fish. You can walk it over the top of the grass. You can walk it in the open water. You can throw it right up on the bank and drag it down into the slop. It'll come through everything without snagging up. So a frog is your natural top water for this time of year as that emergent grass is actually hitting the surface. Let's see what's next. The next one for me would be, it's actually two part. I would say in most fisheries, whether it's clear water or murky, the only thing that changes is your color selection would be either a Senko or a Fluke. Now the Senko you're fishing slow, you're throwing it up to a target. So if you're fishing outside structures, maybe you're throwing it up to that rock point and then slow letting it fall down or throwing it out on the color line and just letting it fall out there in the open water. Those fish will just come up and eat it. But the fluke, the fluke I throw more around that shallow cover. And we've talked about the fluke a lot lately. Down in the video description, I'll link you every one of these baits for each category, the frog, the fluke, the Senko, swim jigs, spinner baits, things we haven't come to yet. I'll link our actual favorite baits and favorite colors in each category. But with the fluke, I love that thing the second those fish are done spawning because the males will continue to protect the bass fry. As the eggs hatch, you get that fry up in the shallows, the bass will protect it. Fishing a fluke around those, we call them fry garters, around those males gets these incredible strikes. And then while you're doing that, throughout the course of a day, you're catching these smaller male fish, you'll find that random female that decided to stay shallow, decided to stay near the grass, and you'll get a giant bite right in the middle of all of that. Now, next one, and this is a video we're going to come back to, so I'm just going to touch on it. Right after the bass spawn, you get something called the shad spawn. And actually, most of it happens at night, but it carries over into early morning, and early morning is the part that we care about. First light in the morning, the shad are up spawning on the hard edges. They'll get up on points, they'll get up in the backs of bays as long as it's hard bottom, not grass. And the bass know it and the bass are there to eat them. And when that is going on, you almost can't touch a spinnerbait. Spinnerbait with a Kitek trailer is incredible during that time. And again, I'll link you the exact baits, colors, everything. The swim jig is another one. Not right during the shad spawn, but right after as they start to back down, the bass will start to pull up to their cover for the day. They might get up against a little tree, up against the brush. The swim jig, with its weedless characteristics, they give you that same profile as a spinnerbait, but totally weedless. You can bang it right through the cover, right through the grass, and continue to catch those fish as the shad spawn is backing down for the day. Now, for you highland reservoir guys, and for you lowland reservoir guys, let's talk about those fish that were backing out, forget the grass. The fish that have backed out. You could throw a top water for them, over the top for the suspended fish and they'll come up, or you can target the fish that have gone down. The fish that are now on the ledges, sitting out on those points, and nothing will beat a deep crank. I have a couple of cranks that I throw. The 6XD and the Big Azuma are my favorites. I have some really specific colors that I throw. They're transitional colors. They're the colors that are similar to my summer colors, but not quite as bold and flashy and aggressive as my true middle of summer colors. But the crankbait is a great way to catch those fish as they're transitioning. The fish that are now bouncing back out those secondary points headed to the outside, but aren't quite there yet. I can run secondary point after secondary point after secondary point quickly cranking and when I run into those fish they tend to be in big schools so the advantage of the crankbait is covering water quickly to find those fish and then you can really pick it apart and switch to other baits if you want to but it's a great way to locate them then last but not least you river guys Again, I've got that picture in my head of that perfect riffle, that fast water coming down, and then it's gonna meet a big pool. And there'll be a bunch of fish in that tail out. 
but the fish that I want is right up there on that first piece of cover below that riffle. The bait that I like to throw, a lot of people like to throw top water, small swim baits, tubes, of course, all sorts of different things, but a small jig, a finesse football jig with an aggressive trailer, something like a pack a chunk or a rage, something that will really kick and move a lot of water as it's coming down that current, but is heavy enough to hold. That's the key when you're fishing that current is a bait that you can throw up and you can hop it and you get a lot of movement, but when you want it to stop, it'll stop. Trying to fish away from the pool near the fast water, a tube will just get blown through there. A Senko would get blown through, but a jig will get down, it'll actually hold on bottom. And then you can hop it up and get your movement again, but it'll hold and you can target those fish up against a piece of structure. So a football jig with a lighter hook, because again, typically in a creek or a river, typically, not always, the fish tend to be a little smaller. You don't always need a giant hook. Granted, you're going to adapt this to your circumstances. So don't take my advice on a finesse football if you know you're gonna go out and hook an eight pounder. Don't do that. But if you know that your creek has some smaller fish, a finesse football is dynamite because I can go to lighter line and I can get more bites throughout the course of the day. So that's just a handful of baits that will help you follow those patterns regardless of which water body type you are on. The post spawn is an amazing time of year. This was a ton of information, but hopefully by breaking it into those four groups, you only had to absorb part of it, the part that applied to you. If you're a guy like us that travels all over the country, you've got to keep track of all of it and it can get a little crazy depending on where you show up on a given day. But this time of year is a lot of fun. Those fish are building towards those incredible summer patterns, but they're not quite there yet, but you can still have a riot. Guys, get out on the water. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.